So how has time changed the woman known to millions as Octomom? In a doctor's exclusive, the newly reimagined Natalie Suleiman is now joining us. Welcome yeah. back to the show. Yeah. What I wanted to first ask you, but also acknowledge is, you know, I'm sure everyone expected there to be a reality show, um, and you did make some very questionable <laughs> decisions that, that made a lot of us probably prejudge you. But again, I want to acknowledge that, you know, at the end of the day, your number one job was to raise those kids, and by all accounts, we're going to be blessed to meet some of them shortly. You, oh, you've done a great right. job with them, but I, I want to ask you why now? Yeah. Why are you living a happy life? No one has thought about you, no one has even thought about the term Octomom, why now come back out and, and publicly try to rehab right. your image? My history was, was haunting us. It, Octomom, I left Octomom. I went back to my life as a counselor. I went back and protected my kids, had a healthy, happy life. The problem is this, it's followed us because people never knew what I did. They never knew the true story. And I had their friends coming up and saying, well, you know, my mom says, your mom's a stripper. And they became quite defensive. And like, no, wait, no, she's a counselor. And then I knew it was directly, you know, hurting my family. So I had to protect them. I'm very, very protective. So you've clearly grown as a person, as we all do. So I think that's definitely commendable. Thank you. Um, so since you're moving in this different direction, right. are there still people that still call you Octomom? When they do come up, I, they say, can I take a picture with you? And hi, are you Octomom? I say I no longer you know, go by that anymore, but thank you so much. But I'm you know, just a mom, I, I don't do that anymore. And they, I think they're, you're they respect it. I think you're fabulous. <laughs> thank you. I think you're fabulous. Thank you. yeah. And, 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 you know, to respond to that, you know, I'm still like all human beings, we all make mistakes and we all learn, we grow, we change. The problem is I'm still today, you know, in the process of pulling my self-worth out of, out of the toilet. I flushed it down we, multiple times. We are all still growing. <laughs> and we are all kind of in the toilet. So right. you are not alone. <laughs> you are not alone. My issue with, with a lot of this and in retrospect, a lot of the grief that you took is you don't have eight babies via, um, artificial insemination you, via IVF, unless right. a doctor implants right, 12, those 12. embryos. And a doctor implanted 12 yeah. embryos. And so right. I think that that's the one thing we have to look at just medically here, right. Dr. Lander, because you don't just magically have eight kids no. unless a doctor I, implants I, enough I embryos. Like I was uh, protecting the doctor. So I, I, I take accountability for being, you know, dumb and, and irresponsible, it really was, and selfish. I basically, I would like to address that, you know, absolutely, I don't wanna be, you know, a burden on any cap taxpayers, and that's a goal, to move forward and not to be a burden on anyone in society, and I own and take responsibility for my poor choices, but it certainly doesn't, you know, take away from, you know, uh, how extraordinary these kids ended up turning out to be. So, I, so you still do receive some welfare? We do, we do, and I'm also working, and it's a challenge with 14. Well, you have 14 it's kids, hard. So that's it's that's hard. That's, uh, I'm That's not a proud. special situation. I'm not proud yeah. of it. I'm, I'm not proud at all. I'm ashamed of that. But it doesn't mean that's going to be permanent. Would you say that, you know, at this stage, having gone through everything, I know that you had severe anxiety. You went I through a Xanax that. addiction. Oh, I remember in the past. Yes, yes. You know, and obviously it's difficult to raise 14 kids no, being addicted to why. something like Xanax. So yeah. you've, you've been able to kick that habit. Well, what happened was, and so when for me, as, a, as that character, when you are, when I was violating, repeatedly violating my own core values and my boundaries, there's going to be some type of repercussion, right? For me, that was the, the manifestation of toxic shame which is at the core or root of all addictions. And for, I, in order to continue that cycle of self-exploitation, dehumanization, I had, to self, I had to numb, emotionally numb, with a mood-altering substance in order to continue that. It was poisonous, it was horrible, detrimental to me, and before it became to the, got to the point where I was no longer available at uh, all to my family, you, I- How'd you kick that habit? I walked away from what was causing me to use it. I was repeatedly violating my own self I was living a life incongruent to what I believed in, my so value system. you walked away from all the from things that live in a false life, living Absolutely. all the things, and, and I applaud for you for that I because, to to begin with. you know, it's overnight to wake up one day and be known as the Octomom and have cameras in your face. I don't think anyone out there can really realize how awful that like must have been. Like kids in a circus.